Shalom. All praises go to the Most High Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham Aruach Kodash, the Blah, the Son to the Elder Apostles, as a great millstone for the teachings of the scriptures, among other things. Shalom to the sincere Akim across the world. Now, this is the book of Numbers, chapter 17, verse, uh, you know the chapter? But the title of the chapter is The Budding of Aaron's Rod. <laughs> right. Now this is Numbers chapter 17 verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. And by the way, this word children is always son. Because the Hebrew doesn't have the word children. It only speaks of sons and daughters. Speak unto the children of Israel. And take of every one of them a rod according to the house of their fathers. And of, the, and of all their princes, according to the house of their fathers, twelve rods. Write thou every man's name upon his rod. So that would be then the twelve names of the patriarchs, which is uh, the twelve sons of Jacob. And adding the two sons of Joseph unto the twelve sons of Jacob. Because your grandson is your son. It's still your son. And it's your bloodline, by the way. Because your father, and then you are a clone or a duplicate of your father within the womb of another woman. You come out, you might look like your, father, your mother, but you are your father's bloodline, your father's seed line, your father's genealogy. Because a woman doesn't have a bloodline. She is the result of a bloodline. Meaning, she doesn't have a... Um, a seed line she is the result of a seed line and then it stops there and that's also mentioned in the book of numbers chapter 36 that a, a daughter oh, what, let me, okay. I wasn't even trying to get it man 36 you know um, if you read this here I'm not gonna read it because the video is gonna take long <laughs> As, a, as I'm known for. But then, um, yeah. You know what? Let me read it. Numbers chapter 36, verse 1. And the chief fathers of the families of the children of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh. As you can see, as always, the sons are being counted because it's the 12 sons of Israel, the tribes. A man can make a tribe, and a woman, she can receive a tribe within her womb. If you thrust her enough, you're going to plant your seed in her womb, and she is therefore then your earth or your oven. And then you put the pizza in the oven, and then you wait for a few months, let it cook, and then the pizza comes out. It's your pizza. You put your ingredients in there, but you need that oven. It's saying, no Sodom and Gomorrah over here. That's how the Heavenly Father set it up. Of the families of the sons of Joseph, so they were from, um, uh, you see, see, you know, Manasseh and um, Ephraim are the children of Joseph, you know, but uh, they're still the sons of Jacob. Come near and spake before, Mo came near and spake before Moses and before the princes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel. Uh, yeah, wait a minute. Right. This same story is actually mentioned in the book of uh, Numbers chapter 27. Again, because I was actually looking for this one. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to do this one. This one I'll do later, Lord willing. It's the same story, but with a little bit more details, you know. But this one is quick to the point. <laughs> Now, this is the book of Numbers, chapter 27, verse 1. Then came the daughters of Zelor Fihad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters Mala, Noah, and Hogla, and Milka, and Tirza. So he had one, two, three, four, five daughters. 
And they stood before Moses and before Eliezer, the priest, and before the princess uh, and all the congregation, by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, which we just read about in Numbers chapter 16, if I'm correct. Mm. Right, number 16. But died in his own sin and had no sons. See, he had no sons. Okay, going on. Wait, let me color this here. Why would the name of our father be done away from among his family? Why? Because he had no sons. So it was a very important thing for an Israelite man to have a son. And if he didn't have a son, then his brother would bring a child unto him in his name so that he can bring forth his brother's bloodline that is passed away. Why? Because you have the same bloodline as your brother because you come from your father. You know, and if he doesn't have a brother, then guess what? His father's brother's son, his father's brother will bring forth a, a child unto his name because... It is still their grand, his grandfather's um, seed. So you are what your father is, right? Because he had no son. Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our, uh, of our father. And you can read the rest for yourself, you know. And if he have no daughter, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. Yeah, you can read the rest for yourself if you have the time. But I'll get over it. Uh, in another another video I'll go over it sorry Get over it. I'll go over it in another video of course but anyway going back to over here <laughs> Numbers chapter 17 verse 2 speak unto the children of Israel and take of every one of them a rod according to the house of their fathers of all their princes according to the house of their fathers 12, tri 12 rods Write thou every man's name upon his rod, and thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi. For one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers, so twelve tribes, for twelve rods. And thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony where I will meet with you. Now, where is the testimony? Right, I got it. Now, as you can see, it's here. Basically, it's the Ark of the Covenant. I get the testimony. So it's the Ark of the Covenant. Right. I will meet you there. Right there, where I will meet you. With you. And it shall come to pass, because there is where you communicate with the Heavenly Father, well, back in the days. And in the middle is the mercy seat. And now, Yahweh Shai, the one that everybody calls Jesus, was laying in the midst of two angels. And he is now that mercy seat. He is the, he's the grace. Right? Because when he died, his body was situated between two angels. One where his head was supposed to be, was supposed to be, and the other one is, was sitting where his feet were. So he is that Ark of the Covenant, symbolically. He's the Ark of the Covenant nowadays. This is the symbolic one. Just like he is the symbolic lamb. He's that lamb. And he's that wine that you drink. That's his blood. And his flesh that you eat. And the bread that you break. That's him that you eat, actually. Symbolically, of course. And the, um, the 70 disciples left him because they thought... He was on a cannibalism tip. They thought like, what? We need to eat you? This is a hard saying. Hmm. Where was it again? Wait. Right, now this is the book of John, chapter 6, verse... 48. I am that bread of life. 
Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. He is dead bread. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, so there was kind of fighting, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Yahweh said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood had eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So, we are in the last days right now. But the last days was since the since two thousand years ago, as you can see it here actually. Last day, in these last days, um, Hebrews. I think it was Hebrews. Yeah, here. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. The Heavenly Father, who at sundry times and in diverse, so in different times and in diverse manners, different ways, spake in time past unto the fathers. How? By the prophets. That's how the Lord speaks and spoke in different times back in the past to the people. Have in these last days spoken unto us by his son so those were the last days so what were the last days 2000 years ago why because second peter chapter 3 verse 8 but beloved be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day so Hosea, oh shit. Hosea chapter 6 verse uh, 2 actually you know what? Hosea 6 and 2 I started one come and let us return unto the Lord for he had torn and he will heal us he had smitten and he will bind us up after two days will he revive us that's 2000 years and in the third day he will raise us up and we will live in his sight so when was the um, end? I mean, the, the beginning of the last days. What does AD mean? AD means anodonomy. So what does anodonomy mean? The term anodonomy and before Christ, which is BC, are used... Yeah, okay, yeah. That was it used for... What does it mean? Anodonomy meaning meaning in the year of our Lord that's what it means so we are in 2023 right now right this is the year of our Lord actually we are still in biblical times that's the point a lot of people like to say like, oh, this, 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 that's in the that's biblical times no 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 man, man. we still live in biblical times but yeah so the Lord is going to wake us up after two days which is around this time that's why we're waking up we're no longer thinking of ourselves as a color because black is a color it's not a race we are a nation of people we're waking up we're not no Africans African was was named by an Edomite Leo Africanus so if you're calling yourself an African you're actually calling yourself a Caucasian person because that's him in the early 16th century, the famous medieval traveler and scholar Leo Scipios Africanus, that his middle name is Scipios, um, whatever, here, who had traveled across most of the North African, da, 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 um, suggested the name that the name Africa was derived from the Greek word Africa, whatever, whatever, meaning without cold, and that is what the, the land is. It is it is without cold. You know, Aprique. Aprique.
paprika. Anyway, it's just gone. So, we are being revived after two days, which is 2,000 years. That's why around 2007, the Hebrew Israelites came upon the scene because the Heavenly Father woke us up. You know, he woke us up. Like, for example, in the book of Psalms 50, he said, Verse 21, Psalms 50 and 21. These things have thou hast thou done. Who what, what has they done? What have they done? They raped, robbed, murdered us, enslaved us. Our so-called brother, which is the so-called Caucasian male, Esau. He did that to us. These things has thou done, and I kept silence. The Heavenly Father didn't say anything. That's why in slavery, when they was lynching us, burning us, castrating us, raping up women, daughters, uh, men, boys, and uh, children, everybody they was raping. They even do it unto, unto their own people. And, um, let me see. A poison in the system. The epidemic of military sexual assaults. Not only are military rapists rarely punished, yeah, da, 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 sexual assault. Um, here, in 2011, report found that women in the U.S. military are more likely to be raped by fellow soldiers than they were to be killed in combat. Okay, an estimated 70 sexual assaults happen every day in the military. And um, let me see, I did I did a lot of videos about this, man. I know. What they're doing is they're raping the men. <coughs> Let me see. Let me see. Six men tell their stories of sexual assaults in the military. More than, what, 100,000 men have been sexually assaulted in the military in recent decades. More than 100,000 men. And you have to understand it's more than that because... A man would not actually really admit to that, you know. So he he rather go crazy, you know, PTSD or whatever they call it, about the uh, impossibility of male rape. Mm -hmm. An average of forty-five male service members are sexually assaulted every day, according to the Pentagon. Pentagon, and that's in the military. Anyway, so going on now. All these things they have been doing to us, right? And the Lord has kept silence because, you know, they think that the Lord is down with them. Thou thought us that I was all together, such as one as thyself. But I will reprove thee, and I will set them in order before thine eyes. That's why you see us on the street prophesying the downfall of this wicked kingdom and these wicked people, the Edomites. Right, so since 2,000 years ago was the last days and we are living in the final stretch of those last days right um, John 6 and 55 for my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him as the living father had sent me I live by the father so he that eateth me even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Now that your fathers that eat manna and are dead, he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who will hear it? When Yahweh I knew in himself, that his disciples murmured at it. <laughs> he was complaining. He said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? So he came from heaven. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth, profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But they didn't they didn't understand it, so um, they left him. Where is that? Here. And from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him.
because they thought he was talking about cannibalism, but they didn't understand that it is it is actually the Passover meal, and it's actually the words that I speak. Those are the ones that you're supposed to be eating and drinking and stuff like that. And of course, the Passover also. And he says it somewhere. Wait, uh, let me try to find that. Right, here it is. Now, Luke chapter 22, verse 19. And he took bread and gave thanks. Sorry, and break it. And gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. This is what he told his twelve disciples, but when he told the other one, which were more than seventy. Uh, let me see something here. Where is it again? Um, where was it? Sorry, wait. Right, it's mentioned here. In the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse um, 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. So, there were 70 disciples, and all left them <laughs> because of this saying. <laughs> because they didn't understand. They was like, no, this guy wants us to be cannibals. I ain't doing this. I gotta go, gotta go. I'm offended in you. <laughs> Blessed is whosoever is not. Blessed is whosoever is not offended in me. Something like that. Blessed are you when you are not offended in me. Like, ooh. You know? In the Lord. Now, um, back to the book of Numbers, chapter 17, verse. I stole that for it. And thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony where I will meet with you. And it shall come to pass that the man's rod whom I shall choose shall blossom. And I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against you. Now, is murmuring a sin? Yes, it is. Because it says it right here. Philippians uh, chapter 2 verse uh, 14 do all things without murmuring and disputing that ye may be blameless and harmless so if you are murmuring you are not blameless so therefore huh, you didn't you didn't messed up right that ye may be and what is murmuring basically bitching and complaining a low and indistinct Continuous sound. You keep on bitching and complaining and talking. Oh, shut up. You need to have more faith. Shut up. The speaker says something very quietly, but then um, disrespectful. You know? Basically, disrespectful things. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of the Heavenly Father, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. So, the elect will shine as lights in the world among their own people and who are the most irritating, stubborn people upon the planet Earth, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Indianos. All the misery that the so-called Caucasian people has done unto us, they still love them. Now, that's a, that's a, that's a home-born slave. That's a house mentality. Because the so-called Caucasian people, they cannot even forgive Hitler. Or what the fuck did he do? Didn't do shit. But anyway, they can't even forgive him. You know? Anyway. Numbers chapter 17, verse 6. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and every one of their princes gave him a rod apiece. For each prince won. That's twelve according to their father's houses, even twelve rods. And the rod of Aaron was among their rods. Verse 7. 
And Moses laid up the rods before Yahweh in the tabernacle of witness. That's here. Come back. Well, actually, here is actually the second veil, the most holiest of holy. And here is where the priests are allowed, and here is where the high priest is allowed. And here it says it too. Holiest of holy, the ark, the veil, the second veil, the outer veil, which is the first veil, uh, the outer skin. It's, it's not actually badger's skin. It's actually a... Um, as you can see here, badgers. It's not a badger skin, huh? How do you spell badgers? Badger, badger, huh? Badger skin or animal hind perhaps badger or the, the or dolphin these are uh, these are all unclean animals now the badger it's actually a um an antelope sorry let me try to find that right now here you have it now now um it's actually this word here which is uh, the hush and it's not a badger but they thought it was funny it says it, it, it has taken a couple of thousand years to unravel the mystery but the answer appears to be that no badgers seals dolphins or unicorns and a unicorn is not a horse with a with a thing on its head a unicorn is actually a, a rhino is a unicorn but you had um, dinosaur type rhinos uh, let me see not dinosaur type actually unicorns Unicorn, um, um, rhinos, these. This is one horn. This is one horn. Uni unicorn, unicorn actually means one horn. Meaning, it's not a horse. It's not a myth, -myth, -myth what? Mythical animal. It just means uh, it's single. Hmm? Uni means single and Kodonu means horn. It's just single horn. So, a rhino is a unicorn. You know, it's very simple. You see, they're trying to lie to you. For example, dragons were removed. Uh, dragons in the Bible were removed. They replaced this verse over here, for example, with uh, the word jackal. You know. That's what they did here in the book of Job, chapter 30, verse 29. I am a brother to dragons and a companion to owls, meaning Job was howling like the dragons because he was very sorrowful. And the owl also howls, oh, you know, oh, agony, agony. He was very sad, but the jackal also howls. So that shows you that then, um, what they did is. They're trying to make dragons look like they're fake by changing this, these, these words because they're liars by nature. Wait, right. I had to double check that Reddit uh, thing, but it wasn't good. So, you know, I'll leave this link in the description box, but actually I, uh, this one is the, is the better one, the badger. Now this is how a badger looks. And then therefore it's actually talking about this animal, which is, uh, the, Tachaitse, something like that, which is almost the same word as this one, Tachash. But they kind of made a translation mistake, something like that, something to that effect. If you read this, and they will explain it to you. It's actually an antelope. It's not a badger or whatever they call it. It's not a seal, because these are all, these are all unclean animals, and the Heavenly Father is not gonna make his clean sanctuary of unclean animals. <coughs> Pardon, sorry.
right now it says here let me go on right now where was I again hmm okay now I forgot where I was <laughs> No, let me just read on. Now, this is the book of Numbers, chapter 17, verse... Uh, sorry for the... It's not really flowing. <laughs> but anyway, like water, how it's supposed to be. But yeah. Verse... Um, let me see. Numbers, chapter 17, verse... 6. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and every one of their princes gave him a rod apiece. For each prince one according to their father's houses, even twelve rods. And the rod of Aaron was among their rods. Oh yeah, I was talking about this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the outer covering is badger skin. No, it is not. It's actually another deer type, which is a clean animal, which you are allowed to eat. The covering of ram. So this would be like a goat type, you know, the thing. You know, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's almost a goat type this thing you know well not a goat more more antelope yeah antelope yep that one because these animals are not on that part of the world they're not on that side of the world so it never could have been a badger it could not have been a badger not never but it's not a badger that's the point right so on um goat hair linen and um, you make linen from plants, as you can see here. 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 Watch this video. I'll put the link in the description box so you can check it out for yourself. Here. This is how you make it. She looks Dutch. But the, the Amish are Dutch, actually. The clothing. You look like a Dutch uh, Caucasian female. You look like a Dutch Edomite. But yeah. This is how you comb um, linen, which are made from these plants. This flax. These flax plants, actually. This is what you pick in order to make that. You know, the linen clothing and stuff like that. And then you can make linen clothing, you know. Of course, you comb it, you spin it, you know what I'm saying, all that there. You know, right, it looks like hair, actually. A blonde hair. The yellow, yellow is blonde. But yeah, I'll put the link in the description box so you can check it out for yourself. Right, so going back to over here, first seven. Number 17 and seven. And Moses laid up the rods before Yahweh in the tabernacle of the of witness and it came to pass that on the morrow Moses went into the tabernacle of witness and behold the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded and brought forth buds and blo and bloomed blossom and yielded almonds so it gave fruit and it started to blossom as you can see here, uh, Levi was budded. Maybe Google's gonna say it good. He's gonna show a picture. Well, yeah, here. Yeah, let, me, let me use this. Basically, this. This is how the rod of Aaron looked. <laughs> this, this is a lie, of course. But anyway, let them, let them have their fun for now. But anyway, just look at the rod. Right. And Moses brought out all uh, the rods from before the Lord unto the children of Israel. And they looked and, ev and took every man his rod, where they put their name upon it too, by the way. And the Lord said unto Moses, Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony, to be kept for a token against the rebels. Why? Why? Well, it's going to explain. And thou shalt quiet Take away, was it quiet or quit? I'm always confused with that. Thou shalt quiet take away their murmurings, or quit, quit, quiet take away their murmurings from me. 
that they die not. <laughs> so, the blossoming, uh, blooming rod of Aaron was kept there to keep them quiet and to let them know that the house of Levi is the one that is supposed to be in charge concerning um, the priesthood, right? Because um, just like in just like in uh, Numbers chapter sixteen, they thought to themselves, like, no, the, the Lord is not only dealing with you; the Lord is dealing with us also, right? For example, here in Numbers chapter sixteen, verse three. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy. We are holy also, right? Every one of them. And the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. So they basically were saying, The Lord is not only dealing with you, man. I'm real too. I'm, I'm, I'm important also. You, you can't just be over me. We're all great. <laughs> the Lord sure, sure showed them. <laughs> and then uh, he died that day. <laughs> well, not exactly that day, but he died. See if the Lord loves you <laughs> more than he loves Moses. That looks like, favor that, that looks like favoritism to me from the Lord. He picks and chooses who he likes. You don't say, the Lord like me. No. And a man of the Lord is not going to say that. You know. It's just going to be. Because Moses was not like that. He was humble. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> right. Now it says here. Um, let me see. Um, right. I write the murmurings and stuff. Like I'm looking. Yeah, no matter. So that they die not, okay. And it was also for to prove the leadership of the Levites. Because the Lord said here, he said, verse 5, And it shall come to pass that the man's rod whom I shall choose shall blossom. And I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against you. So he's going to choose, um, he's going to show wh who he's with. And he was with the tribe of Levi. Right. Verse 11. And Moses did so as the Lord commanded him. So did he. And the children of Israel spake unto Moses saying, Behold, we die. We perish. We all perish. Yeah, you will if you mess around. <laughs> Whosoever cometh anything near unto the tabernacle of the Lord shall die. Shall we be consumed with dying? Right, because if you come near, you're gonna die. You are going to die. If you come here, because they thought they was allowed to come here too, like they're special. Also, no, the Lord has set apart the Levites to do these type of things. When Yahweh came, the one everybody calls Jesus, He did away with that part, and then all the nation of Israel will be kings and priests, not just the Levites. As it is written here in the book of Numbers. And money, uh, a few other. Exodus has it also. Revelation 1 and 7. No. 6. And it made us kings and priests unto the Heavenly Father and His Father. To be, sorry. To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. It's also in the book of Exodus 19, if I'm correct. Because it was set up before that. You shall be a nation of kings and priests, right? Now. Exodus 19 and 6, yeah, that one. Uh, well, well, I was just there. And also a Revelation 1 and 6, I already read that. I think there was another one. Mm. Kind of forgot then. Exodus, um, 
19 and 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, but to them kings and priests. That's what he made us in the end. Because it was the, in the beginning, it was just, uh, you know, only the Levites were priests. But anyway, now all the, all the tribes will be priests. Now, it says here, let me see, um, Numbers chapter 17, verse 13. Who's, yeah, I already read that, sorry. I'm going to over here. Numbers chapter, this is a precept for this verse over here. Numbers chapter 50, oh, sorry, chapter 1, verse 51. And when the tabernacle set it forth, the Levites shall take it down. The tabernacle is the tent. And when the tabernacle is to be pitched, like a tent, this is the tabernacle, the tent. When the tabernacle, I'm, I'm going to put this in the description box. This is a good picture. And this one is a good picture also. But uh, I want a bigger thing. Um, a more accurate, more beautiful. It doesn't uh, show. Does it show? This is a good picture, actually. Mm, it's kind of blurry. I would like for it to be better quality. That would be good. I'm trying to find it. If I can, I'll put it in the description box for you to find or click on, actually. But that's a good picture for for illustration's sake, for example's sake, and the other one is also a good picture for example sake which I'll put in the description box All right now going back to over here sorry numbers chapter 1 first uh, the rest of 51 the Levite shall set it up and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death so only the Levites were allowed to actually set up the tabern the, um, the tabernacle and and and, and, and uh, there was the only one that were allowed to set it up and and take it down and then you know move around with it and there was also the only one to touch the the, the, the tabernacle. Uh, sorry, the Ark of the Covenant. Because uh, you had the uh, Uzziah also. Uzziah touched the Ark and he died. He was from the tribe of Judah. Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 6. And when they came to um, Nahum's threshing floor, which is the front door. No, no, no. It's the thres threshing floor. is where you um, make weed here. Like this is the threshing floor. This. This is the threshing floor. To do this, to make weed. To do this, you know. Right. Now. Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of the heavenly father and took hold of it. Why? For the oxen shook it. So the, the, the animal hit it and he thought it would fall. So he wasn't trying to do bad. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, against Uzzah. And the heavenly father smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark of the heavenly father. So if you are not of the tribe of Levi and you touch it, You'd be dead shall be put to death and the general official shall pitch their tents how round about as you can see here this is another good example they was only allowed to be here and if they come close to this they'd be they'd be dead and they knew that so that's why they was afraid, like, man, are we going to die? We're going to die, man. We're going to die. All paranoid and panicked. But yeah, that's what you get for trying to be the boss. You know? You need to stay six feet. Six feet. <laughs> Safe and effective. Fake-ass story. But anyway. But it's still funny, though. It's still funny. Safe and effective. Still funny. Y'all being deceived. <laughs> 
Yeah, what was I reading here? Sorry. And the gentlemen of Israel shall pitch their tents. Every man by his own camp, and every man by his own standard, throughout their posts, which is this here, throughout their posts here, just like that. Yeah. But the Levites shall pitch round about the tabernacle of testimony, that there be no wrath upon the congregation of the children of Israel. And the congregation means assembly. And the Levites shall keep the charge of the tabernacle of testimony. They shall keep the charge. That's their duty. So where were the Levites situated? Here. This. And this. And of course this. And of course this. The Levites were allowed to be here. They were allowed to be near the tabernacle. Here. And the rest, they had to stay away. Or else they would die. Right. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So did they. Let me see. Numbers chapter 18, verse 4. I'm going to read it after this video anyway. But anyway. And they shall be joined unto thee, and keep the charge of the tabernacle of the congregation, for all the surface of the tabernacle. And the stranger shall not come nigh unto you, all gods, they won't die. And ye shall keep the charge of the sanctuary, and the charge of the altar, that there be no wrath any more upon the children of Israel. Why? Because they wanted to have rank above the above Moses and above Aaron but the Lord said no I choose them and I behold I have taken your brethren the Levites from among the children of Israel to uh, to you they are given as a gift for the Lord to do what to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation so that was their job but the Lord sanctified them. He made them basically special. <laughs> Among the Israelites which are already special. Verse 7. Therefore thou and thy sons with thee shall keep the priest's office. It doesn't say daughters. So when you see women priests, you should look at it and be like, Oh, Satan, I didn't know you was, you was balling. You balling. You balling right now. Therefore thou and thy sons will keep sorry shall keep your priest what therefore thou and thy sons with thee oh, shall keep your priest's office for everything of the altar and within the veil and ye shall serve I have given your priest's office unto you as a surface of gift and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death which is of the other uh, 11 tribes. They were not allowed to go there, or else the Lord would kill them. You know, uh, but yeah. Uh, this is the Old Testament, of course. This is still in full effect, but the fact that we're being put to death when we come there is not, it's not, that, that's where the mercy seat comes in. That's where the mercy of the Lord comes in, which is, he's the mercy seat, by the way. The one everybody calls Jesus, Yahweh Shai, you know? Because if you type in Jesus, you're going to get this guy. Yeah, this guy. This is this imposter. But if you type Caesar Borgia, then you're going to get this guy. And then you, and then it's going to link you to this guy, which is him. But if you type Yahweh Shai, you're going to get this. Versus Jesus Crazy. Oh, that's good. Children's book. Oh, that's good. Right. You have Russian icons. Let me see what they got. Oh, okay, cool. You have the French icons. Mm. A little bit dark over there. Over there. No, that's not it. Anyway, enough of this mess.
madness. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, there you have it. Oh, yeah. That's what I also wanted to talk about. Now, the reason, well, one of the reasons why the Heavenly Father has his own reasons, but I'm trying to explain it. Um, the almond, the almond tree. Now, why was it uh, here? No, I think here. No, in the book of Jeremiah, if I'm correct. Here. Jeremiah chapter 11. No, no, no. Chapter 1, verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, it came unto Jeremiah. Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen well, for I will hasten my word to perform it. So, Jeremiah saw a vision. And in that vision, he saw an almond. He looked, he saw, what does he, is that an almond tree? Right? A rod, I mean, of an almond tree. And it blossomed. So that's what it, uh, so when he saw that, then said the Lord, then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen well, for I will hasten my word to perform it. So what does that mean? That means that just like how fast the Lord made the almond tree to blossom. What was it again? Sorry. Not an almond tree. I mean the almond stick. Um, here, this is what I typed it, right? Yes. Just like this. I'll put this link in the description box too, but I'm going to blur out this. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's a lie. Anyway. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, here. Right. So he will hasten the prophecies because he did it in one day. He let the 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 rod blossom in one day. Boom. And it and it gave fruit too. Hey, this one is better. Yeah, I'll put this in the description box. I can put this one if you want to also. You know, because I know the truth. Anyway, so. Just like rock and roll. When I was younger, I actually thought rock and roll was some Caucasian stuff. Then I found out, through the internet, of course, because they didn't teach me shit. I taught myself. Heavenly Father, whatever, of course. I just found it. Like, Whoa! I didn't know that. Then I started to figure out stuff like, these goddamn devils are stealing everything that we made. All the inventions, everything, anything. But anyway, that's a whole other story. A thief come at that, but uh, but yeah, almond trees are renowned for being the first deciduous tree to wake up again in the spring. I didn't even know what deciduous was, so I looked it up, of course. <laughs> deciduous, it says here, for tree shedding its leaf annually and uh, denoting milk, milk thief. I was like, oh, okay, oh, it's beginning, okay. Which I shed after a time, and then I looked up. Oh, no, 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 shit. Here. What is the full meaning of deciduous? Falling off and, or shedding seasonally, or at a certain stage of development in, in the life cycle. So basically what they're saying is, almond trees are, the, are, are the renowned, they're really known, for being the first deciduous tree to wake up again in spring. I don't know if it's renowned because I didn't know this until I started reading the Bible, <laughs> and I and I and I only knew this like a, a couple of months now. That that those trees are the first trees to wake up out of spring. I did not know that. <laughs> so, a renowned, known or talked about by many people, famous. <laughs> I've never heard of it. Never heard of it. That almond trees are the first one to wake up out of spring, out of, out of winter sleep. Sorry, in the spring, you know. So, in fact, the Hebrew word for almond means awake. So, what does it mean when it when the Lord told Jeremiah? Where am I again here? When the Lord told Jeremiah, in the vision that Jeremiah saw, when he saw a, a, a rod of almond tree, then the Lord said unto me. Thou hast seen well, thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. And if you read the whole chapter of Jeremiah, chapter 1, it's talking about that the Lord will hasten the destruction of the Israelites that were being wicked. They was being evil, and the Lord's finna kill them. You know, just like He did with us in slavery. We was being evil toward them, so He allowed these beasts, these savages from out the caves, to do all manner of things with us. 
But they took it overboard because the Lord said, hey, I was but a little displeased. Zechariah 1 and 15. And I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at east. For I was but a little displeased, and they held further the affliction. So the Lord was not even that angry. But these things that they have done unto us, oh shit, they're going to pay. They're going to pay. The lynching, uh, the raping. All that there. He used to beat the man and then rape the woman. They had fun. They had fun. Oh boy, they had great fun. But that time is going to come. You know, the time will come for revenge, as the Lord saith. But we're waiting. Sexual exploitation, exploitation of the enslaved. You know, when rape was legal. It's all good. You're going to pay for this, you devils. You devils are going to pay for this, but not now. Now you can just walk around free, happy, and shit. Once that time comes, you're going to get destroyed. Just like how, after 400 years, the Egyptians got destroyed. And the Egyptians, their sons got their ass killed. And then people might say, how could the Lord be so cruel? He's killing the Egyptians, their sons. They have nothing to do with slavery. Really? Didn't the Egyptians murder the Israelites, their sons? In the book of Exodus chapter 1? Didn't they? You see, that's why you don't reason with the devil. You don't reason with the devil. Because the devil think different. They be like, how is that? That's cruel. How could you do this, man? Is that your God? Your God is Eve, man. Really? Exodus chapter 1, verse 15. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of one was Sephira, and the name of the other, Poah. And he said, When ye do the office of the midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, which is, this is what it means, upon the stools, um, birth, This is the stools. This is how you're actually supposed to give birth, not laying on your back. I mean, the ancient stools. Ah. Oh, man, come on, come on, come on. Oh, I saw it here. Oh, this, okay, okay, sure. This is how the women are supposed to actually give birth. This is how two women give birth to another. Now, this is when the, when the Edomites kicked in. The fucking bullshit. But this is how the other nations used to do. Like, for example, the Egyptians, they used to sit up on the stools. Egyptian women giving birth illustration on the walls. They show you how they used to do it. Not lying on their back. This is garbage. It don't make no damn sense. How is this chair going to float? Whatever. Whatever, man. This is how they used to do it. Alright, so going on over here. If it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. Why? Why did they do that? Well, um, where's the slavery sign? I'll show you why. Okay. But wait. Alright, then, um,. <clears throat> Real rape of Rufus. Slave experience. Okay, shouldn't he rape married women? Uh, da, 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 da. Funny. Right. Um, how were female slaves punished? <laughs> that, that, it, it, man, even if they didn't do anything. Systematic rape anyway. This is why they killed the men. And then they left, they kept the women alive. Why? It's fucked up. You devils really think you're not going to pay for that, right? It's cool. We shall see. We shall see. Here. If it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. 
and uh, the Hamites did it to us. The, Ed the, the Edomites doing it to us until this day. That's why they killed the, the young men. And then they and, um, they leave the girls alive. But there were twin, twin black girls. You know, because America, you know, you can do shit like that. Anyway, they had an interview. These two, these two beasts. They had an interview where they was talking here. They was talking about. I can't really look at this without actually, you know. I get the, uh, I get the uh, very fucked up feelings in my man, boy. You don't want to know what I have in my head. Anyway, you know, they was talking about that they are now, since they look like boys, they are now being harassed by police. And they was afraid of that in the beginning. And they stay all, still are. Wait, let me see. I just never went that far until I met one guy when I was... We own day for a short period of time. I, 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 I don't want to listen to your shit, but uh, so you you a mistake because your mother didn't even want you. I think it's here. I don't know. Artistically, in any in any spectrum. You know what? I'm gonna try and find it. Oh, wait. Right. Now, as you can see here, here it is. The discrimination that we come up against, I, the only thing I would say... The discrimination that we come up against, the only thing I would say is probably the... The probably hardest thing about probably being trans, men, or trans, trans male is the fact is with the whole police situation thing going on as far as targeting black men, that was something I was like, that's what I'm going to have to deal with? I was like, so it kind of was a nerve-wracking thing to be driving out or going out or walking. You just walk on the side. You like, you don't know if you're gonna get pulled over by the cops, which we have. Which we have. So this is what I'm trying to tell you. What they're doing is they have been doing this for fucking centuries, right? They would kill the, the black man, the so-called black man, or harass him, do whatever, and then they would let the females go. But since these two dumb beasts want to act like men and look like men, they they're gonna face them same type of problems. Cause now they think you're men, so now they're gonna target your ass. That's that has been done going back since four thousand years ago. Okay, so it's not something new. And even in the book of uh, Matthew one, no, no, where is it? Matthew two or something like that, right? Where they used to kill the boys and leave the girls alive. <clears throat> Let me see. Matthew chapter 2 verse 16 Then Herod when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men was exceeding wrath and sent forth and slew all the children that was boys that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof from two years old and under according to the time which he had diligently acquired inquired of the wise men no, it doesn't say boys, but I'm sure it was boys. Let me double check that. Um, let me see. Where was that again? Um, 16? Matthew 2 and 16. If I'm correct, it was boys. 2 and 16. He didn't kill the girls. Because the power doesn't come from a woman. It comes from a man. Here, Greek 38, 16. Here. A child, a boy or a girl. Excuse me, pardon. A boy as often beaten with impunity. <clears throat> a girl is uh, It says here on a um, biblical narrative, when Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the wise men, it says Magi, he was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem. See, the boys. And it's in a vicinity, and it's vicinity, so the area, 
who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the wise men. So who did he kill? Boys. He didn't kill the girls. You know why? You want to know why? You want to know why? You want to know? This is why. Because they're to be fucked. Yep. This is why. He did the same thing to the Native Americans also. So yeah, that was having fun. And uh, they're going to pay for all this. Because this is all on um, injustice. Like, well, how can I say it? Justice has not been served for that yet. But it's coming. Don't worry. Don't worry. You devils, don't worry. It's, it's going to come. So just, just, just lay back. Just lay back. Just lay back. I'm going to I'm I'm let, me, let, me, let, me, let me get one scripture for you. Just, just lay back. Just lay back. Ain't nothing going to happen to you. Ain't nothing going to happen to you. Ain't nothing going to happen to you. Is that gonna happen? Isaiah chapter 40, verse. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 11. I, I could start at 8, but I'm going to start at 11. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they, shall, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, Yahweh, thy power, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not thou worm, Jacob, because we're defenseless. A worm is defenseless. And ye men of Israel, that's why we are known as sheep among wolves. Another type of beasts. I will help thee, saith Yahweh, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Oh, so... We're not going to be defenseless worms anymore. Cool cat. Be, uh, sorry. Thou shalt thresh the mountains, the governments, the summits, the people that have summits. These people. These are the governments of the earth. And government consists out of, out, out of people. So what's the Lord that we're going to do? Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills a shaft. Shaft is an empty husk of a... An, um, here, for example. Shaft in the wind. Here. This is shaft. These, these empty husks. The grain falls on the ground. Hey, this is a good picture. The grain falls on the ground, and then the shaft gets blown away in the wind. Here, yeah, another, another good picture. This is the shaft. This is this is what's going to happen to the nations. And you might ask yourself, like, huh? How? Well, how is that going to happen? Joshua twenty three and ten. One man of you shall chase a thousand. For, for the Lord your God, he it is that fighteth for you, as he had promised you. So he has promised us that he's going to protect us. He's going to put his spirit upon us, just like how he did with Samson. Samson. Heavenly.
judges, yeah, look there. Judges 14 of them. Okay. Oh, the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Okay, and he rent a kid, uh, a lamb, as, as a lion, as if it was a kid. But I wasn't looking for that one, actually. I was looking for this one, I think. Yeah. Judges chapter 15, verse 14. Oh, it was 14. Not 14. Okay, sorry. And when he came unto Leah, the Philistines shouted against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. I thought he heavily. <laughs> it was mightily. And the cords that were upon his arms became as flax. That thing that I just showed you where they make linen from. That was burned with fire. And his bands loosed from off his hands. And what did he do when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him? He killed them. He killed thousands of people. Not just one time, by the way. So that's what the Lord is going to do. He's going to give the men of the, his people that he loves. Then he's going to choose between the rest of the world and his people. Just like how he did in the book of Numbers. And what, what, what is going to happen to the rest of the people? They're going to die. That's, that's what's going to happen. And you might say that's not, that's not fair. The Lord is going to give you superpowers. And you're going to be strong. And, you, and you're going to kill people. <laughs> um, is this uh is this fair is this a fair fight let's say you're hiding here is this gonna play okay oh yeah it was gonna play I saw it let's say you was hiding here you know fair fight right that's a plane that's there a plane hiding that, that don't look fair to me. Shit. Okay, let's say, okay, let's say they ain't got no planes and shit like that. Okay, cool, okay. Oh, let me see here. Let's say you're hiding in a building. In a building. That, that don't look fair to me. Shit. Let's say you just, you just, you know. You're just somewhere. Whatever I've been looking for. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. Thanks of war shooting. This, this don't look like a fair, fair thing to me. That's not fair, right? He can kill you just by hitting you with that. Even a car is a weapon. How much more this? <clears throat> anyway, for people that like to say stuff like, "Oh, that, that's not fair." What, 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 what fair? Really? This, this don't seem fair to me neither. Oh, actually, I don't want this one. Military. Right. You know, this shit don't seem fair to me. But anyway, it's all good because there is no fairness in war. It's all about winning, right? Get to shut the fuck up. Right. So, once we get this power... <laughs> yeah, you might think I'm. I don't see Caucasian people actually. I see, I see what I see. <clears throat> I see real power, and that's what we're gonna use against you. Because the Lord set it up like that. He already said it. This is the type of power that we're gonna get. <clears throat> um, this is the type of power that we're gonna get. So you have your fun. Once we get our fun, uh, our time to have fun, don't complain. You can't, because if you do, you'd be dead. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to say Shalom. <laughs>